I'm here to talk with Abby Rosenberg of Hopkinton today. We're going to talk about her as founder of the Mental Health Collaborative here in town and talk about her work, how she's been inspired by the people that she has worked with to get programs going, how she brings people along with her in community to activate and provide more resources and programs for community as well. I'm looking forward to talking and learning from Abby and also hearing something we don't know that much about from her. So please join me in our conversation. Hi, Abby. Thank you for joining Meet Your Neighbor today uh, here with uh, HCAM TV. It's great to see you. I know. Hi, Cheryl. It has been so, so long. And I was so excited when you called me to be on the show. So thank you so much. And I can't believe I don't even know how long it's been, but you look great. And it's great to see you. <laughs> yeah, same here. And at least we can see each other virtually. And I was thinking of you for um, and a conversation um, because I've been seeing your name a great deal these days in social media um, at, related to the Mental Health Collaborative. And I know there's a social media campaign coming up next month for the month of May. So I thought this would be a great time to uh, find you and have a conversation together. And you can talk a little bit about what's going on and share the story behind this uh, Mental Health Collaborative, which I understand you are the founder of as well. Um, so uh, could you talk a little bit as we get started, um, what's going on with uh, this program and for May and how to get started? Yeah, I'm really excited about May Mental Health Awareness because uh, we really just want to help end stigma as part of our, our pro mental health collaborative. The real foundations of it are mental health literacy. So that really has four components. One is how to obtain and maintain your best mental health, your optimal mental health, meaning not just feeling good, but what do you do when things are not so good, which we all know about right now. Um, it is knowing what mental illness is, what it is not, and what to do about it. It's decreasing stigma, which is the whole, whole um, thing that we're doing around May Mental Health Awareness Month, hopefully. And then the fourth component of mental health literacy, which all of mental health collaboratives programs embody is really knowing when to get help, where to get it, how to access it, and then what to expect when you get there for professional help. So um, for me, we are, we've asked people to share a story about their mental health challenge or experience. And so we're, we're featuring 31 stories, one for each day of the month. And hopefully that will provide people with hope uh, and, and some of the stigma that goes with mental illness that you know, as you know, that really prevents people from getting help they need sometimes. Yeah. And uh, so this is, uh, I think, a really important uh, emerging contribution for our community as well as our world. What got you started in this organization? Um, yeah, it's a bittersweet story. I, as I think, as you know, I'm a nurse practitioner in psychiatry. So I have really just been doing psychotherapy and pharmacology for the past 30 years or so. And one of my former patients died by suicide about three to four years ago. I'd worked with him for a really long time and he was doing really well, had moved out of state. And I was informed that he uh, died by suicide and that he had left me some money. Uh, and so I wanted to honor him and really at the same time, all of that was happening and I was trying to research where there might be gaps in our community and uh, in communities at large. Um, I was seeing in our kids and my kids and, and many youth and young adults that I work with, because I was working at, a, at Leslie University at the time, um, just a lack of knowledge about mental health, about mental illness, um, What's the difference? What to do about it? And and kids not really knowing, you know, feeling anxiety and really thinking they had a brain tumor. So not not knowing what anxiety was. And I thought, wow, how can we graduate high school and not know all about mental health when we learn so many other types of literacy, but but not mental health literacy. So that's one of my missions is to really educate not just youth 
and young adults, but whole communities. Yeah, really important mission. Um, and I notice you have uh, quite a few young people involved um, on the board, as well as uh, you have some programs going on in the school currently too, uh, or yeah. connected with middle school students. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, Cheryl, because we've worked together in the past, you know how I operate. I, I have like about 12 arms going in different directions. <laughs> uh -huh. um, one thing that has not changed. I remember when we had so many aspirations and I was always too busy. <laughs> so uh -huh. That hasn't changed that much. But but really one of the branches of that that I really wanted to create and that we've started to do and, and branch out with is a young adult advisory board. So. These are young adults that are anywhere from, I think, 15 to 25, and I, they're all, almost quite 30 uh, people involved now, and uh, they are so invaluable to me. I love hearing from them. They have kind of their own little branch where they do uh, mental health hours monthly, and they run everything themselves. I just kind of consult. So that's been an awesome part of Mental Health Collaborative. The other parts are really doing our uh, aside from from increasing awareness, of course, and we have we do fundraise as well to keep our programs going as a nonprofit, but really bringing programs into schools, communities, organizations about mental health literacy. So we did we started. Um, I was able to receive a, a grant to for part of this, and we brought our mental health literacy curriculum into Hopkinton Middle School for the remote students and. Our hope is that it's going to go into the middle school next fall, starting next fall for all students. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Uh, that's quite a bit of progress. And uh, how old is this organization? Um, I founded it in um, 2019. So we got actually the summer of 2019. So mm -hmm. not all that long, right? No, we're still yeah. we're still an infant organization, as they say. Yeah, and uh, I um, am a fan of uh, sharing our stories, and I'm, I noticed that you have, uh, you're sharing 31 stories, you said, for May, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, why you picked the medium of stories for addressing your campaign for May? Just because um, they're real, and mm -hmm. I believe in you know, real people, real stories, uh, none of us are alone. And um, I think everyone has a story. Uh, mm -hmm. Most don't, uh, don't feel comfortable sharing it, but I think that's getting, that's changing. And we yeah. hope to be part of that change because we mm -hmm. all, we have all been impacted in some way by mental illness and we all have struggles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's important to be reaching out and connecting and sharing that knowledge, that awareness. This is part of who we are as human beings and for getting resources as well. So thank you for that good work. And we can find out more on the website. Yes, I, I'm still in the midst of fi fixing the website, making it better. But um, yes, mentalhealthcollaborative.org is our website. Yeah. And, um, yes. It's it's growing all the time, the website. So. Uh -huh. Well, and uh, again, uh, I thank you for that work and, and all your arms you're talking about. And I knew you back in time, very involved with the Sharon Timlin race as well. Another important um, organization for getting community active together. Uh, and that was also inspired by one friend who, of yours, one person who kind of got you going and creating a whole uh, organization for community, right? Yes, so my friend George, who's actually still living with ALS, uh, it, it was diagnosed 22 or three years ago and I had just moved to Hopkinton and um, I think we met soon after that. And yeah, it started with just an idea of bringing people together for a cause. and. That's so important to me uh, is that community and why I love Hopkinton and um, but of course so so the the Timlin race was yeah I think I did it for eight 17 or 18 years and I just stepped down last year um, but really you know for my for my current vision with mental health I really I, I feel that I want that to grow within Hopkinton but also far beyond I hope mm -hmm. yeah. 
you know, uh, you, uh, this is uh, being a leader, uh, taking the seat and making these programs grow. Uh, what would you say uh, was the motivation behind that for you? What inspired you to take a little idea and to and go running with it? I know, I know you're a runner also, uh, but... Uh, I have to admit, I have not run in a while now. I'm classified as a walker. But... Probably don't have time. <laughs> no, I love to walk. It's just my, uh -huh. my body doesn't love running. Um, yeah. I think, um, and it was funny, you said in your email to me, what's something interesting about you? And I, I'm just yeah. going to throw that out there now. All right. Yeah. I'm going to answer your question um, with that. But um, I, something people don't know about me. Yes, I love to walk and I, I love community. I love connections. Um, but I'm a quote junkie and I a love quote junkie. Quotes. What's that? Yes. <laughs> I love quotes. And I think you may know that, but that is something um, about me. So when you, you ask me, what is my motivation? I think of mm -hmm. Amelia Earhart and yeah. um, her quote that a single act of kindness throws out roots in all directions and those roots spring up and make new trees. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's my quote yeah. of the day. And I love quotes. Uh -huh. um, well, that, yeah, that's a beautiful one. And I, do you have any ideas for yourself, uh, your early roots, uh, what inspired this kind of work that affects so many? And, and as you hope to go out to the world, um, I, um, perhaps it was education. I know you've had a lot of education and a lot of work with people, right, through the years. Um, yeah, I think what just motivates me is the, the teamwork, the connections with people. I love I love all the people I met through the Timlin race, all the people I've met in Hopkinton, you, you as well. And, you know, kind of just thinking that we're um, better together than alone, yeah. really. Yeah. And um, yeah, so and really just I've, I'm a lifelong learner. I hope to always be becoming a better version of myself through others, through learning. Mm -hmm. So this is a good example of completely going out of my comfort zone. Um, so was the Timlin race at that time. I'd never done anything like that. But, but uh, you know, I've been in private practice for a long time. And this is really going out of my comfort zone. But it's exciting. And, and I have to, as I tell my young, my young adults, worst th what's the worst thing that can happen? Well, We've impacted some people, but maybe we'll run out of money. <laughs> right, right. And probably get a lot of branches uh, going too from all the people you have involved. And uh, I think it's really inspirational also that you're showing people how you are taking these early ideas from uh, issues that you really care about from people who really had an impact on you. And, and made something large and helpful to so many people, you know, that other people might get that idea that they can take a small seed and, and make something happen. And, and now in this time, more than ever, we're being called for that. So um, I, I think that is uh, fascinating about you. I didn't know actually about the quotes or I forgot about it, but now I'll know who to go because I'm usually checking for something good and I'm not surprised you have them. Um, and I know, speaking about the tree as a metaphor, that you're, uh, I believe you have a son who's also involved in community work and helping people in need as well. I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about that. Oh, thank you. Most people don't know because we have different last names. So, yeah. <laughs> but yes, I have two boys, both in college, and um, they're both, I, I, I think, like all people can be very, very giving and kind um, and see the best in others. So I, uh, one of my, my oldest son who is uh, finishing his junior year in college, well, on, at Zoom University, honestly, yeah. <laughs> like many, many young adults are, mm. um, he came home last March when the pandemic hit and had really just asked around town some things he could do and was, uh, um, pulled in, I should say, by some of the great leaders in our town, Hopkinton Youth and Family Service and the Senior Center, Amy Beck and, and um, Dawn and Colleen over at Hopkinton Youth and Family. And they said, what we really need is an emergency fund. And he kind of took that idea and started talking to different people in different towns as to what they have done. And he started a nonprofit 
called that's that they just got their nonprofit status. It's really exciting. Wow. And yeah, it's called Hopkinton Emergency Fund, and they really just opened their doors. And he's pulled in a bunch of great team members to to help him. He's down in um, D.C. right now. But yeah, they've had they just opened and they've had so many requests. And I think what surprises so many people is that there is poverty in Hopkinton and it's real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we've certainly faced a lot of challenges uh, when dealing with scarcity of uh, funds or other means these days. So it's really good timing and um, and impressive um, that this organization has uh evolved as well. So uh, gratitude to your son. This is Evan? No, this is um, Zach. Zach. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and that you have two sons in college now. My goodness. I think they were a uh, little <laughs> last time uh, we were together too. Um, so you have raised your family in Hopkinton and um, and uh, now they're in college age. And I wonder if you can say a little bit about weaving uh, family and your work and um, together and uh, what, how, how community is important uh, for different kinds of work that you've been doing, such yeah. as this of Hopkinton. Um, yeah, I mean, I just love this town. My kids have just, through the years, you know, of course, we all there. There's always the downtimes too, but but we met such great people. Um, it's again, it's all about community and helping each other and seeing beyond our differences. Really, just looking at people for who they are and not looking at, um, you know, not looking at our differences, but looking at our our shared humanity and. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, hopefully I, you know, we all do our best, but hopefully I've um, used the community that we, that I love so much to raise a family and, and be a part of something bigger. And that's, you know, I think everyone can do that. Everyone can, um, one thing I just, I just met the other day with my young adult advisory board. And one of the things, and I don't know how this actually relates, but a little bit, one of the things that I said to them is, um, you know, we all have such different abilities and strengths um, and challenges, but the one thing we all share is that we can all be kind. And that's so important. I mean, mm -hmm. just even a smile at someone, especially when we're all, these are not easy times, yeah. right? Now. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, that is so important. And I think um, for community also, we're growing. We've grown a great deal in population since uh, you and I met uh, years ago. Um, what would you say from what you've observed, um, what is a way that we, uh, as parents can, can help our children, our next generations, um, practice kindness, what, uh, any suggestions on that? How do we know there's so, so many things that we're focusing on that are important right now. How do we not lose kindness? Mm, that's it. Yeah, I think I'd be a lot more wealthy if I had the answer to that question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. but I just think, you know, knowing just knowing that none of us are perfect, yeah. that we mm -hmm. all have to forgive and really just what I said, like seeing beyond our differences, because that's what makes us unique. And a lot of us, especially with with social media for younger, the younger generation, and even even my generation, you know, comparisons and um, what someone has versus what someone doesn't have and what people look like is all um, so front and center. And really that's not what we have to pay attention to. Or so it's about judgment, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think just, yeah, just knowing we all have something to offer and, and we can really, I, I keep on saying it, but see beyond those differences and appreciate them and respect them. You don't have to agree with everyone, but yeah. So more respect and appreciation and getting ourselves away from uh, those uh, inclinations to judge and, uh, you know, uh, dig into that. And sometimes that divides us, right? And that's what stigma is related to as well, yeah, rather yeah. than just being open, like we all have challenges, parts of our story of joys and challenges, right? So. 
Um, yeah, you are promoting kindness, I see, in the work you're doing, Abby. Thank you. I try. <laughs> um, and when you, oh, um, yeah. I was just going to say, in a time like this past year, when we have such little control over so much and we can't plan, and that's very hard for me. I'm a planner. So very hard for me to, to have to pivot and say, nope, can't do that. Got to do something else. Um, and it's hard for many people, I'm sure. But in this time when there's so little control, that is, again, what can we control? And going out of your way for someone else is something we can control or being kind or, or seeing the good in people. So those are all things that we can control when, and hopefully that sticks with us, even as we regain control as things open up in our communities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Well, how about uh, for you, when you have some spare time, with all you're doing, uh, what else do you like to do? You mentioned that you like walking these days. Um, and how do you take care of yourself to keep yourself going in all of these directions, helping community? Yeah, like, like I said, I'm a lifelong learner. So that's, a, that's an area that I need to get better at. Um, being self-aware <laughs> is important. So I'm aware that I need to get better at that. <laughs> um, but yes, walking, being with family, being with friends and sometimes combining all of that. Um, trying new dogs. Things. I love my dog. <laughs> best. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, pets. Yeah. Petting your dog. Um, yeah. I mean, just really finding ways to take care of yourself and connect with others because it's so easy not to do that. And I, like I said, I'm a work in progress. Yeah. Well, what in your work, um, you had mentioned self-care, uh, that you could teach a little bit about self-care. And I know we have about seven more minutes. Um, and sometimes I ask for a experiential uh, component of the program. Is there anything that you can teach for me and people who are viewing this in terms of self-care? In our, in our talks, we in our trainings, we, one thing we teach people is box breathing. And um, I don't have, I'm not, I'm not going to do that now, but that's something that you can look up on, on, you can Google it. And there, I'm sure there's many YouTubes about it, but that's something that you can do anywhere. No one knows you're doing it. Um, it's a tool that really tricks your brain into resetting and not being so anxious or nervous or worried um, or not having a stress response when something's happening. So that's a really, I like that tool a lot. And I, I, I use it myself when, because what I tend to, um, think too much sometimes. So mm -hmm. yeah. if that's not a positive thing at the moment, then actually doing the box breathing, uh, it doesn't allow you to, you, you focus on your breathing. So you can't have those, you can't have too many thoughts in your head. Huh. And it's called box breathing. Yeah, it's really just visualizing a box and breathing on each line of the box. And the, the magic of it is holding your breath. So you might go up for four counts, breathing in, holding at the corners, which is really what's kind of going to reset your brain to calm down and get out of that uh, natural stress response that you might be in. And then breathing out at the, the next line and holding, breathing in. So that's, it's really pretty simple and you can choose a count four or five or six, whatever your, your lungs can handle. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's one thing that we do teach and we teach really just basic self-care, which, you know, just sleeping enough. And when, when things are stressful, you mm -hmm. really need to go back to basics. And I, I often ask people, are you sleeping? And they either say, yeah, all, all day or not enough, or they might, mm -hmm. I might ask about nutrition. They might say, yeah, I eat all day or no, I haven't eat, eaten in two days. So you know, things like that, drinking enough water, uh, connecting and mm -hmm. the things I've talked about and um, really telling people that you're grateful for them if you are. So, so little things like that can, can add up and really um, help during tough times. Mm, well, that's uh, helpful to hear. And I think you also talked about something really important, which is sometimes turning off that mind that maybe goes too much into worry and stress and criticism, right? Yeah, um, so I'm that- I'm very good at that, so. 
<laughs> yeah, well, most, most of us are, and it does take a lot of work to try to quiet the mind. Uh, and the box breathing sounds like one of the practices as well as gratitude. And from what I understand, uh, these are practices far back in time that people would use uh, as well. So um, it sounds like you're helping to bring it back and, and show us the connection with our mind and our body, how they work together as yeah. well. I mean, I, and it, again, I can't take full credit. I, I, I got the idea going, but I have a great team that I work with and the great young adults and people that are open to having the opportunity of learning because it's something that most people don't talk about is, is mental health and mental illness. Right, yeah. Well, uh, thank you for uh, promoting uh, literacy and awareness in our community and spreading the word through the sharing of our stories. Um, for uh, this coming month of May uh, and in the years ahead as well. And uh, I, I can see how this can have many offshoots with all the people you're getting involved in our community uh, to go on and do good work for all of us because this is really mental health awareness um, is all of our story and uh, understanding our connections to it, understanding our connections to each other and for resources that you provide that uh, platform, that uh, space for us all to talk about. So uh, looking forward to what you will be sharing uh, next month in the campaign and the stories. Any last words as we have one minute left of uh, guiding life philosophy, a last quote you wanna end with or? Well, I'll leave with a quote. And the quote is from Kyle. Kyle Cares is a, .org is a nonprofit who I've become involved with. And um, they're a wonderful family who has made the most out of a tragedy, which was losing um, Kyle to suicide um, three years ago. And in Kyle's, Kyle was in college. And in his, his suicide note, he wrote something. I'm actually going to read it. I have it here. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's just heart wrenching, but what a great legacy is he says, be nice to everyone. Everyone has a story that could break your heart. Be good to everyone because you never know what someone is going through. And yeah. it gives me chills. <laughs>